peace, infinite waters diving deep once again. Five signs you're a lost soul. We are here, Woo, breathing in that beautiful prana. Wait a minute, we're not in nature, it doesn't count. Can I get a hello there? So every single day I literally get thousands of emails, people telling me, people saying that they've They've gotten lost somewhere in a ditch. I don't know where, they've just gotten lost. And then sometimes they say they find themselves, but they're trying to look for a purpose in life, the meaning of life, and sometimes they feel everything is pointless. And in becoming your greatest version, I've had to go through the long and winding road. I've been a lost soul, right? I didn't just wake up one day and say, can I get a hello? I could have done but I didn't, know. Along my early journey, I was going through a lot of stuff. I had a lot of inner demons, but there, there are five signs that you can tell if you are a lost soul, but I'm, I'm not just gonna give you the signs, I'm gonna tell you what to do if you notice this within yourself. Let's start with the first sign, destruction. Oh yeah, you are on a destructive path. You see, when a fire has consumed everything, the only thing left for the fire to consume is itself. So, what happens when you've just graduated, or maybe you've just got a new job, or maybe someone's just given you a million dollars? Isn't that nice of them, right? You are supposed to feel so happy, right? Apart from the last one, the other two happened to me right, over a decade ago. I was supposed to be the happiest person alive. But wait a minute, I wasn't, right? I felt bitter, angry, why? Because it doesn't matter if someone gives you a house or a car, that's not anything if you don't know who you really are. You see, a lot of us, we're lost in the matrix because you have no knowledge of self. A lot of us, we're lost in the matrix because you have become disconnected from your true authenticity, right? So many times we feel separate from everything around us. That separation makes us become very violent, not only externally, right? by slapping someone in the face. Don't do it to me, please don't, please, right? Or becoming destructive towards yourself. That is a key sign. Sometimes people are drinking excessive amounts of alcohol. They're taking drugs, a lot of drugs which don't actually promote their health, their wellness, but actually promotes their own demise, right? So you've got to become very aware, can you care for yourself today? Because in becoming your greatest version, you've got to take care of yourself, right? I talk about loving yourself 100%. So when I was going through a period of my life where, okay, it was hard for me to really accept myself. Right? I love looking in the mirror these days, but before I used to look in the mirror and not be 100% happy with what I saw. Thank goodness for mentors, right? I had my mentor, I had loads of mentors back then who really put me on the good path, right? Away from self-destruction into what I call self-actualization. Many times when we find ourselves becoming very destructive, we have to ask ourselves, what environment are we in? You see, everything, like Nikola Tesla said, is frequency, vibration, and energy. What kinds of music are you listening to? What kinds of friends do you have? What kinds of food, what kinds of foods are you eating? See, as soon as an animal is killed, it releases a certain chemical within its own body. We consume that, therefore we take on its fear make the connection. I saw that along my early journey, so I had to start changing my diet. 
I moved to a more plant-based diet, I felt calmer within myself. So guess what? I was becoming, well, I wasn't smashing all the windows for a change, right? <laughs> I was taking care of myself, but also other people. And once you do that, you move away from tearing down and you start building up. Right? Because it takes more to create than to destroy. Let me repeat that. It takes more to create than to destroy. What's the second sign? Desensitize. Oh yeah. I'm talking with people every single day. And they are out of touch with their energy in motion their emotions. I'm like, how are you? I'm fine, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not. That was me along my early journey. I didn't even know how I was supposed to be feeling. I didn't even know all of the different ranges of emotions I was supposed to be exhibiting. See, a lot of us, we become disconnected from the truth of who we are. So when you, when you hear that expression, someone has a lot of soul, maybe James Brown or whatever, okay? Or yourself. What do we mean by that? I'm talking about someone being in their core frequency. The moment you deviate from your core frequency, you are moving away from your soul. You are becoming soulless. So for a long time, I was soulless. I was a zombie. But I had just graduated. I had lots of money. But I didn't know who I was. More so, I was disconnected from the truth of who I was. So when you realize, the more you express yourself without guilt, you see, a lot of us, I'm a Pisces. I exercise the throat chakra. Okay? And the more you can really exercise your throat chakra, that is going to help you move into your emotions. Can you say yes? Yes. When you want to say yes, of course. <laughs> can you say no when you really want to say no? Or are you sitting on the fence? How many Pisces have we got out there? Put your hand up. Are you indecisive? Chances are <laughs> you're like me. That's how I used to be, right? I still am, don't worry about it. Many times when we are disconnected from our true power, it is because we are afraid to feel. With feeling comes responsibility. With responsibility comes responding to your ability. So a lot of us, we don't want to take responsibility because that means we've got a lot of work to do, right? So I'm sitting there in the lecture room and they're talking about taking responsibility for your emotions. I'm like, get out of here. What are you talking about? They did it. No, no, they did it. No. They did it. No, we are part of it as well. We've got to start taking responsibility for how we feel. Many of us, we are lost because we have no empathy, no compassion for our fellow human being, but more so, no compassion for other animals, other life forms in existence. So the moment you realize everything is connected, the moment you realize if people over there are hungry, it's also going to affect me. The moment you realize that the more I deny the truth of who I am, I am going to be like a house without a foundation. Well, there's no house then, is there? What's the third sign you're a lost soul? When we realize the distraction, it's the five D's here, by the way. So the distraction is the third D, right? The third D. 
Now, distractions are everywhere. When we talk of being a lost soul, I always say this is the archetypal story of all of our lives. Look, the caterpillar is lost. It has to go through the metamorphosis into the butterfly it becomes found. When you are lost, that is fine because once again, you are exploring polarity. Let me repeat that. When you are lost, that is okay because you are exploring polarity. But you see how the story is supposed to end is that you are supposed to be found, right? You may not get another chance in this incarnation. So a lot of us, we might be lost and we get stuck because we are distracted. We've lost focus. We've stepped out of the realm of I am. We've allowed other people to define us and we have started to live up to other people's shoddy expectations of who we think we should be. It couldn't be, it couldn't be further from the truth, farther from the truth. It couldn't be more of a lie. Why? Because when you are focused on your true calling in life, what happens? Everything falls into place. Everything falls into alignment. You start meeting new people. When you are distracted, you're going to find yourself in the wrong place at the right time <laughs> because there are no accidents. But you know, your soul knows, your energy knows, your core knows you shouldn't be there. Right? You should be cultivating your gifts and talents. But once again, in this matrix, in this what we call the field, the distractions are needed to show you if you are who you really say you are. So you go on the internet, it's full of porn, it's full of all kinds of nonsense. The distraction, right? Because it's all part of the yin and the yang, the dance of life, the duality of good and bad, this eternal battle. It's all an illusion. But it becomes a reality when we forget who we actually are. When we know who we are, we can see it from a bird's eye view. Therefore, the distractions are no longer distractions. In fact, you, you want the distractions to be there just to encourage more contrast than what we call the life experience. To be focused, I always say, it's not about having a goal. It's about having a theme of your life. So when I was going, when I was a lost soul, because I was, <laughs> I said, okay, I need a theme really quick. So I said, okay, become your greatest version. But I was hospitalized for one month over a decade ago. How did I bounce back? Because I said, I'm gonna do something today that my future self is gonna thank me for. What's the fourth sign? Deceived, deception, right? How many of us are living in deception? You see, a lost soul is a being who lives in perpetual deception, self-deception. They say, could be a woman here who says, I look ugly. I tell her, no, honey, you look beautiful. She tells me, what are you talking about? Because it doesn't matter what I say. The only thing that matters is how she perceives herself. The perception we have of ourselves is greater than the perception other people have of us. So, once you realize the, de the deceptions from religion, the matrix, politics, money, war, sports, all of these things, only have power when you externalize your own power. Let me repeat that. They only have power 
they only have power when you externalize your own power. Many of us, we are lost souls because we have taken the Maya, the illusion, as the truth. So I said, we've been sold a cheap story and mistaken it for the truth. That's where self-deception comes into place. So how did I go from really it being a struggle to wake up to becoming my greatest version? I realized a very simple truth that in order to find yourself, the great paradox is that you have to be a lost soul. We are all lost souls to begin with. Right, that is part of the life itinerary. But when you go into the wilderness, once you become an alchemist, when you are alone, we are never alone by the way, you've got nature around you. Once you are listening to that primordial sound of the universe, what happens? You begin to awaken from within, you begin to step into your true power and the deception disappears and all you can see is your true authenticity. Many of us, we've got friends around us who tell us a whole bunch of lies, right? I don't want people like that around me. In fact, I don't have people like that around me. I want people who are going to tell me the truth to their own perception of how they see the truth. Not tell me what I want to hear, I'm not going to externalize my power to a guru. I'm not a guru. I'm my own guru, <laughs> right? You should be your own guru. At the same time, there is a great benefit in having a mentor. Oh, definitely. Because we are not, nobody is an island. You're going to need people who are going to serve as the catalyst to help you become your greatest version. To help you move out of the illusion of separation and embrace the truth of unity. The fifth sign you're a lost soul and what to do about it is dishonesty. Now, are you growing that Pinocchio nose? I was for a long time until I had to, I had to move it out of the way, right? Now, with a Pinocchio nose, a lot of us, we don't realize, we tell ourselves the biggest lies every single day. Why? Why do we go to the lengths to tell ourselves great big fat lies? Like, I love my job. No, you don't. Like, I'm always gonna, I'm always gonna get another chance to travel the world. No, you're not. We know deep down we're not. We've got to do it right now if we're serious about it. Because it allows us to justify where we are. You see, many of us, when we say, okay, I am like this because da 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 da, it can almost give us an excuse to stay where we are. So when you realize in a nutshell that the more honest you can become with yourself, the more transparency you develop, thus you move more into your authenticity. You see, we see in films that, hey, psychopaths have, psychopaths have the most fun, right? But once again, how can it be fun when you're cut off from the very life machine system that supports you, right? It's no fun at all. But because you are disconnected, you can't even feel it. So in turn, you start believing you are this character. Let me repeat that. In turn, you start believing you are this character you have created based on your ego. And the ego is wonderful. It's not negative. It's not positive. It just is. It helps us go through this 3D dimension. But the ego is not the truth of who we are. You see, many of us, we are lost souls because we start believing the ego. You've got to start moving from your head 
into your heart space because the heart knows the truth. So when we when we talk about how to become more more honest with ourselves, you got to start living more from the heart space, but more so you have to allow yourself the freedom to lose perfection. You got to allow yourself the freedom to be who society says you shouldn't be. That is how you become more honest with yourself and that is how you stop being a lost soul. You turn from the caterpillar into the butterfly and then you say, can I get a hello there? Have a beautiful day. We're here having fun. Infinite waters, diving deep once again. Stay well, stay healthy, peace.